y'all. This is Little Red. Jason dropped his video number two in what he calls a documentary um, about the targeted campaign against Katie Joy Paulson without a crystal ball. It's quite funny to me. I haven't seen any evidence yet. He just showed all of our evidence, really, and proved nothing wrong. Or prove nothing at all. Let's listen. In any story, there are two sides. And if we want to find the evidence that the side has that is against Katie Joy Paulson, the Facebook group, the admins of that group, the people that doxed her, I'll have the evidence for you in this video again, just to make sure you've seen it. And the other information out there, if we want to know what their main points are against Katie, one of their leaders named Cheshire Vic, Steve McRae's co-host. Cheshire Vic has never been anyone's leader. Maybe Steve's, maybe, maybe she's Steve's. She's not mine. She's my friend. Um, I had to put him on time and a half speed because his voice. Let's listen. Has already told us where to find this massive database of evidence against Katie Joy. When directed by Steve McRae to DM them if they wanted the database of evidence against Katie, when a user asked them, where is it? She said that it, it was the Twitter account without any Crystal Balls commentary account. Give it a breeze through. They say they have more against Katie, but then again, they won't release it to anybody. So we're forced to go to this Twitter account. Let's look at the most damning things on this Twitter account towards Katie to see their side and understand it. Then we'll look at the most damning things towards that group and we'll leave with a final verdict. So here we are. This is without any Crystal Balls unaffiliated commentary at WOAC Crystal Balls. Notice that it tries to mimic Katie's Twitter handle to try and get people who are searching for Katie's Twitter to find it, which I think is very telling, if you will. Also, if you have to put in your title of your, your Twitter banner that it's not defamation or harassment regarding Katie Joy Paul's and AKA without the crystal ball, I think that also says something because the content should be. It says that KJ had her subs go mass report this account. So therefore, this account made it very, very clear on her profile that this is not harassment let's listen speak for itself and as you'll see it definitely does it says it's not affiliated with anybody but we know that that's not true follow like etc is not an endorsement basically this is just trolling one last thing i'll say about this account before we get started is that this account has put out katie joy's address and docs publicly on its twitter so let's find some of the top posts that would be its best evidence so this is its pinned tweet and obviously its pinned tweet would be the biggest thing to use against katie especially when this person knows that anybody messaging steve mccray to see the database of evidence against katie is provably sent here it says without a crystal ball aka katie joy paulson calls herself an investigative journalist, yet has a history of hypocrisy and often substitutes mean girl tactics for objective analysis. Her work will be the focus of commentary, critique, and parody while respecting Twitter's rules. I find it very telling that your top post isn't the most damning thing against Katie Joy. It's just Twitter's rules and you promising that you're going to follow them. This is done because if you follow this account, they have participated in some of the worst of the harassment against Katie Joy. And it's more of almost like a legal thing, it seems. They put the Twitter rules at the top and promise everybody they're following them. In my opinion, it's pretty... And twice, people have succeeded possibly more twice that I recall in the recent past, that they have successiv successfully had her account restricted and she had to verify and prove to Twitter that she was not harassing, she was not a bot, and apparently she proved it. Provably, her account's still active. Let's listen. Pretty much, uh, that's a pretty guilty thing to do. Now this is pretty weird. Ambitious and packed full of receipts as always, integration of Katie's comments from different platforms. Through my wimpy years brain has to mute the video for text parts. In my opinion, Katie Joy could learn a lot from you. Weird considering that you yourself doesn't even follow its own advice as I'll show you in a moment. But if we look, this is just- This video was posted, tweeted by, without any crystal balls, yesterday or the day before. But Jason, you've been working on this investigation for six months, and your first piece of evidence is something that was posted in the last 48 hours. Okay. It's a video talking about how Katie has pissed off all YouTubers. So what? Okay, people don't like Katie. That's not, in my opinion, worth all of this it's insanity. You think Katie, Katie would have actually done victim. something provably wrong. So let's find another post. This is just another retweet talking about Katie backstabbing somebody. And if you look into that situation, you find that that's not even true. I'm not going to go into it. This is just Katie having some type... No, Jason, you have to go into it. If you're doing a documentary, docu-series, proving us wrong, you have to go into how we're wrong. You don't just say, I'm not going to go into it, but it's wrong. That's not proof. This whole video is no proof. 
type of beef with another YouTuber. In my opinion, it doesn't explain much of any of this. So let's keep moving. This basically broken down is that Katie says that she didn't have private Discord. As you see here, it said, this is a post. I don't have a private Discord. But then, that's awkward. She claims she didn't have Discord. This is what you end up finding when you look into all of these things. It's more of semantic manipulation. Well, if I, I have a clip of her this many months ago saying she doesn't have a Discord, and now we have a post from her saying that she doesn't have a private Discord, which is admitting that she did have a Discord, though we have no clue when she created this Discord, whether she is or isn't lying, and it just doesn't make any sense. So I'm just going to keep moving past this. But I do want to tell you, the neighbor did make a death threat at her over a pride flag. That is a factual thing that she showed me. So I don't understand how that's a lie. They're saying that compared to the lie about her neighbor, neighbor threatened to kill her over a flag. Well, the neighbor did threaten to kill her over a flag. So I don't understand how that's a lie. Though you'll find a lot of... I'm sorry. The neighbor did threaten to kill her over a flag because Katie said so is not proof that it's a lie. Of this, when scrolling through this quote unquote database of evidence, when you would expect that at least some of the top posts should be hard evidence against her so that it excuses at least some of the behavior against her. Well, look at this. It looks like um, Pescator saying something about Katie didn't threaten the lawsuit, but then did threaten the lawsuit, told Repzilla that you would sue them or not. Maybe you should just ask Repzilla. Let's move forward. Um, I thought Crystal Ball commentary. Fam move forward because there's nothing to prove there because there's proof of Katie saying that in voice and typing jesus jason i thought this is your thing i thought this is what you do for a living family vlog kj advertised on her main channel only uploaded one video that had 32 subs not 27 and was deleted in less than a month misrepresenting basic trivial facts is a part of katie joy's pattern of problematic behavior again so my point that i want to make this isn't something major that katie does saying 32 instead of 27 for god's sakes and how do you know that at one point they didn't have 32 subs and five of those subs left or how do you know when katie looked it didn't have 27 and then it gained up to 32 these are the tiny details that i keep seeing represented by this account now if they didn't want me to have to look at these tiny details why would they be put up as the main complaints against her let's try to find something more serious after glam life guru wonder if glam life guru, guru will use any other records to follow up on legal action she threatened katie with a year ago after profiting off of dragging tatty for over a year and jay not using her articles well without a crystal ball official changed her tune well wh what's wrong with her one talking about tatty when she admits that her channel is a tea or drama channel what now okay profited for a year calling tatty a snake publishing husband's court records implying tax fraud accuser of threats is used emoji after three cease and desist jay star didn't use kj's articles now katie is open to the possibility tatty wasn't she changed her mind on a story that's the issue here really i thought that this database was the thing that was going to convince everybody katie is a threat worthy of a year's worth of private facebook groups threatening her talking about how she looked putting her address out there delaware county sheriff's office confirmed the reports related to adoption were not released because of exaggeration and false narratives this is why i'm grateful for confirmation like this i have no clue what that is even about without a crystal ball spawn so why put it in the video moron Answer appears perhaps Katie paid to be in their pro ambassador program at the very least offers what seems to fit the definition of a pyramid scheme or multi-level marketing scheme like KJ used to rail about. So I guess now they're going uh, complaining about one of Katie's sponsors, MLM supporting company. Again, I just don't understand, it, you know, how it works in case you don't know is that we get emails from companies that want to advertise on our show. It's about as far as it goes. No, that company asks influencers to reach out to them. They don't reach out to the influencers according to their website. Let's listen. That's how it works for me, at least. When does one earn the right to be a that when are young, too old to be targeted? I don't know, Hunter Moore, but WOACB also said she would not just believe all women. Katie Joy demanded just believe the one year plus she's accused Steve of doing that to her. Well, that's the thing. He did do that to her, though. They both have admitted that that happened. It's weird that you see this account so invested. The woman who's defending Hunter Moore is the same woman said that she wants to do that to young boys that walk by. And again, they are manipulating what Katie said. I would take this as a bad joke. If you want to judge her over it, that's fine. But I don't think that this is even something that most people would care about. And we don't even know who you are. We don't know how what kind of jokes you tell. We don't. You, you get where I'm coming from there. So this just seems really petty again. And I will make. They probably wouldn't care if anyone besides Katie said it, who is an advocate for all people, but slags and drags all those people. You're making this too easy, Jason. At this point, I'm going to keep going through this just for the sake of giving these guys a chance. The more you go through this, the more you see that it's just a big stack of petty things that they try to use against Katie. They take anything they can, like you saw. Katie saying 27 subs or 32 subs when it really had 27 subs or, 20, or 32 subs and making it into this horribly negative thing about Katie. Now, I'd like to say that this account started doing this towards Katie heavily when in June. Let me pull up my thing here. Started doing this heavily towards Katie in June of 2019. And right at June of 2019 is when Kyle Curtis did a stream on the Non Sequitur Show. 
And in the side chat, Katie professional. was logged into her account when it had about 30 or 40,000 subs. And she stated that Steve made her uncomfortable before and after streams with the way that he would speak to her. And she listed, you know, that's where this all started. First, she said, yes, Steve made me uncomfortable before and after some stream. And when Steve and Steve's troll groups came after her is when she elaborated further. And only after she thought about the fact that she was at work and read the definition of SH, if you do go look up the definition of SH, you'll see that it does state that when you're at work and somebody propositions you, that it is SH in terms of that. So what I want to point out, and I think the biggest thing that I've noticed looking through this is the people who are the loudest against Katie, who started in June with the majority of their content against her. They all like to represent that uh, they target her over that sexual harassment stuff and try to use it as a way of kind of saying, hey, if she can say all of this, then you shouldn't believe that Steve McRae made her uncomfortable. But we don't need all of this to make up our mind on whether he made her uncomfortable or not. We have all of Steve's clips to be able to do that. I'll go grab one. The truth of the matter is, Steve McRae is an abrasive person who has been accused of these things even before Non Sequitur blew up. I showed a clip in the last part of my documentary, uh, documentary said in a very <laughs> sarcastic way. The part one has a clip of him with David Should Silverman. I will add this as in proof that even if you want to say Katie Joy has made jokes and done things, that this man, there's no contest on whether he made her uncomfortable. In this clip, he admits what he said to Katie Joy Paulson in that pre-chat or post-chat. And in this clip, he also shows the way that he does talk to women while on camera. We can only imagine how he talks to them off camera. Katie's married. And no matter if you like her or not, it doesn't mean that people like him should be able to talk to her that way. Take a listen. Yeah. And you promised the entire panel hand jobs if you got on too, so there was that. <laughs> I remember that. I yeah, remember the specific well, details of that. Tell you, Clay, I, I just figured she, I just, look, as long as it's dark, I just figured she can get it all the way at one time and it would like <laughs> <laughs> Um this well, maybe, maybe we can just load up our responsibility here and we'll just we'll turn off the lights and play a game of who's in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. We're going to play the game, Whose Penis Is This? <laughs> I said penis again, but again, I'm saying it live. I'm not saying it pre-show. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to avoid ever saying the word penis live before show. Just so gonna say, Steve said the word penis. Why looking at me in the camera? As it says at the top, in a mocking way towards Katie, Steve said the word to me while looking into the camera. But let's let it continue. He is bringing up the pre-show or post-show where he had these statements toward Katie, and he's giving you a bit of his response, his rebuttal. He is in mocking it, but he's doing it. Uh, oh, wait. You have to go to the screen. Stop talking for a second. God damn it, Chess, shut up for a second. Dick. No, uh, no, dick. I'm just kidding. Give me Dick. Give me Dick. Oh, okay. That was I would too like funny. To I would like to point out. He actually just was accused recently with DMs of a new issue. Let me show you that too, because this goes back to even before he got on non sequitur. Let's take a look. Now, back in 2016, these are DMs that were released. This individual released these DMs because after she had this conversation with Steve, basically messaging him after him after he said sexually inappropriate things to her in a live stream, he released only what she said. So she was forced to put out. This isn't even Katie. So what this has to do with us trying to prove Katie's persistent problematic behavior, I'm kind of confused about. But Uni's always confused, so, oh well, maybe that's the point of his video, to confuse people. The full DMs. Why am I showing this? Well, I'm showing the last clip so that you could see Steve admit that he did talk about certain things that Katie said in a pre or post show. He just admitted to it and discussed it in the last clip. In this clip, I'm going to show you that this pattern of behavior has been going on since back in 2015, 2016, before he even got on non sequitur and met Katie Joy Paulson, and it's been a constant problem with him. Let me read it. She says, I don't like you anymore, and I will tell you why. You see women as toys for your pleasure. You've laughed when other men make C U N T jokes and have made it clear that you hate feminists. Steve replies, I dislike SJW feminists. Seriously, I have a ton of XGFs on my F. B page who respect and love me. I treat women with more respect than you could ever imagine. Please do not go full Aspie with me. Don't respond and I will just forget your completely misplaced comment to me. Sound good? It is spelled Aspie for your future reference. I don't care how other many females take your behavior. I was speaking to how I take your behavior. Allies for you does nothing. I made a public comment that you are a sexist and you see females as prey. Your behavior has proved my point. Steve responds, this is why I dislike SWJs. Moving on. Seriously, just stop. I can't stand SWJs when they get like this. She responds, you can define my opinion however you want. You attempted to publicly trivialize what I said publicly when you asked me to be your lab partner. What was your goal there? I didn't know this, and I assume a lot of you don't either. So a lab partner is when you're going out with someone, but you're in that awkward stage where you are transitioning from best friends to boyfriend slash girlfriend. You basically are afraid to even touch each other. Don't fret. Soon you'll be making out, and all of your other friends will tell you, I'm sorry, will yell at you for PDA or public displays of affection. So just so you know what a lab partner is in relation to what happened, that's what it is. She asked what was the goal there. He replies, just stop. It was a joke. Stop. Your S WJBS, please. I'm in no mood for it. She responds. Jokes are supposed to be funny. What was funny about your response? He says, stop. She says, your response was not funny. It was an attempt to marginalize my comment and present sexual superiority. Minimizing and blank does not redefine it. What was your motive in asking me if I would be a lab partner? I will tell you why. You are a sexually frustrated middle-aged man that is angry. You want to blame your sexual failures on women as a whole. You think that by making them less of a human than you are is the way to go. You accept and laugh at the C-U-N-T jokes by Sam, a self-admitted misogynist. I don't know what, I don't know who she's talking about. He then says, I will not indulge your SWJ 
J insanity moving on, and you're acting exactly like a C-U-N-T, so take a look in the mirror. Get laid or something. If anyone is frustrated, it's you. Have you been laid this year? This decade? Then the most shocking thing happens. She says, so the only way I can be acceptable to you is if I get laid. Charming. Watch the death of your channel as a result of your Neolithic worldview. He says, go to this webpage to get a date. Now, if you don't know what this webpage is, I'm not going to read it out loud. It is a prostitution webpage. So in the middle of an argument from a woman who's offended by something he said that was a sexual innuendo coming onto her in a, in a live chat, in a, in a live uh, conversation, he then links to a sexual prostitution webpage and tells her, go get a date. Threatening my channel like a true SWJ. Good job. I asked you to stop. You didn't. So now I'm going to express myself and you go to my channel. It gets a little worse than this, but I'm going to move on from it. I think we've made our point. So let's go back to the commentary account one more time. See if there's anything there that we can actually look at that will explain why these this group of people spend their time over over a year attacking Katie Joy over trivial things. Again, I have to call back that this account shared her address. Let me show you something. In an extremely hypocritical play from that last post that you saw from the claim database against KJP, this same tweet, the same information was put out by the WACB commentary and by this account, Little Red. These people are members of the private Facebook group. I'm just going to read it to you and give you a little context to what's going on. The day before this, Katie's address, Katie's neighbor's address, and pictures of Katie's neighbor and son were released on Reddit by an anonymous. I want to see that. I want to see that Reddit, subset Reddit, whatever. I want to see where someone posted her neighbor's children's picture. Not saying it didn't happen. I haven't seen it. Let's listen. This account. Uh, I mentioned this in my last video on the subject. So let's take a read. From an admin of the private Facebook group against Katie Joy that Steve McRae ran up until he was forced to leave it due to his agreement with Katie Joy. This uh, this this uh, other admin admits that Steve McRae doxed KJP's husband's employees, then doxed her, or I'm sorry, the husband's employer, and then doxed her address and phone number, all of which the dumbass posted herself. And my all-time favorite, then they post a phone number and address for Katie Joy Thanks Paulson. The now, their out. claim is that because if you go and search inside of the government registrar for LLCs and find Katie Joy Paulson's listing and take it, it's okay if you spam it out on social media and give everybody Katie's phone number and address and her neighbor's phone number and address along with pictures of her neighbor and the neighbor's son because they say Katie posted it herself. Katie never posted this. Katie is forced to register this through the government. In the definition of doxing, it states that sharing someone's address for malicious purposes is doxing. This is as malicious as it gets. In fact, there is no reason for anyone to be sharing her phone number or address. The reason I've stressed this in my last video and the reason I'm stressing it in this video is because they have no reason to share it. They've done it many times and they act like this about it if you go to the bottom. Oh wait, did I just dox Katie Joy? Oopsies. The issue here is that this group of people that are doing this are the same people that are in the private Facebook group that was owned by Steve McRae until the agreement and they are the group that harasses Katie. They've not been able to ever put out an excuse for sharing her address. Their only excuse is Katie shared it herself, so why can't we share it? Well, that's a lie. Her listing this with the government is not her publicly sharing this information. The platforms also agreed that this was a violation and took these down. These screenshots were captured off of Little Reds before the posts were taken down. The WOACB commentary accounts were taken down before I happened to get a screenshot of it. So what does all this mean from this from this perspective? Well, up to now, you've seen the majority of what's listed against Katie Joy Paulson from what Steve McRae and the admins of the group with Cheshire saying is the database of evidence against Katie. But now I'm going to give you what I think are are valid criticisms toward Katie and what maybe they should have been more focused on sharing instead of her private info, making fun of her husband, making fun of her kid, putting her kid down. Again, if you look at my videos on this uh, YouTube channel, Unirock 2 titled Versus Mode Part 2, put out in December of 2019, and my other videos about this subject after December of 2019, you will see packed full of all the things that they've done and said about Katie that I find not criticism, but harassment. General criticisms toward Katie Joy. I do think Katie Joy makes a lot of mistakes that other YouTubers make when their channels are small. I worked for a year and a half on my first channel under a thousand subs before my channel blew up and started to grow. And during that time, I made a lot of the same mistakes Katie Joy makes. Misreporting things, putting things out uh, that I shouldn't put out, accidentally like putting out a screenshot that might have somebody's like email address or something in it, then having to go in and retract it and apologize. The question, in my opinion, isn't whether people make mistakes. It's whether people are willing to try and make up for those mistakes as quickly as possible and do the right thing and then correct that behavior in the future. The reason why I don't come straight out and go against Katie Joy Paulson and expose her is because she does try her best to correct the mistakes <laughs> that she makes when you can approach her. And I know that a lot of people are going to state that there is issue is they can't approach Katie Joy. Well, you could approach Katie Joy and anyone out there that wanted to had no problem approaching Katie Joy before June of 2019. Ever since this harassment campaign led by Steve McRae and the members of his, admin, his uh, admins of his Facebook group, and once they started to do this toward Katie, Katie had to shut herself up. Her address is being shared. People. No, sir. Katie Joy blocked everyone before I ever met Steve McRae. Before Steve McRae met a hatter or any of us, Katie had us blocked. Anyone with an opinion differing from Katie gets blocked. We all know that. 
You know that, Jason. People are calling her home. People are threatening her. The death threats have been put out. I've got the voicemail death threats are on my Periscope if you want to go back and hear them. I'm nope. not going to put them here on YouTube for privacy reasons and for uh, the, the contents threats. of them. I'm probably already there demonetized as it sits. What will I say toward Katie? The same thing I'll say toward every other YouTuber. People deserve criticism. Criticism is where you talk about the problems you have with somebody else and you try to be able to be cognizant of what they can do to make up for it and whether they will or not. And since Katie has made every attempt she can to a point of even wasting her time and allowing herself to be trolled trying to make up for mistakes that she's made, I've given her the advice to stop listening to people, take time before she posts on social media, have some Somebody come check with her from her team before she posts things out and not be so reactionary. And I'll speak now. Oh, she took that advice. And I'll speak now to what just happened with Sanders Kennedy. As you know, the Sanders Kennedy shared Shane Dawson's information and claimed there was a criminal investigation against him. Katie trusted Sanders and shared the contact information because she believed Sanders Kennedy. A lot of people want Katie Joy to be on the hook just as much as Sanders Kennedy. And if Katie Joy as deserved to, should. people would put her on the hook. But again, Sanders lied. He tried to manipulate and imply. And Katie bought into it. Katie lied too. Katie also Googled a phone number and posted it as if it was correct, and it was not. If I looked at what Katie did and saw something she did at fault for, I would give it to her. But in this situation, like with others, why do I bring it up? Because you will see every time something happens, regardless if it's her fault or not, regardless if she did something to amplify something or not, and whether it could be put on her, this is what this troll group will do. And it's why you have to take so much time in these situations and be able to really know what's going on before you make up your mind around Katie Joy Paulson, knowing that there's going to be a group of people, not just spamming for people to hate Katie Joy in any situation, even if she gets someone's subscriber numbers wrong, for God's sake. But even more than that, you don't know whether someone's going to lie to you or give fake information as they did back in November and December of 2019. In fact, you'll recall that one of the main reasons why Steve McRae and I uh, started to have issues is because I warned Steve McRae that the screenshots that he was using to call out Katie were likely fake. And eventually they were proven to be fake. And only after I called him out and exposed him with Versus Mode Part 2 for pushing fake screen. They were never proven to be fake. They were just not proven to be real. So the subject was dropped. If you can't prove it, stop talking about it. The person didn't want to come forward. So therefore, there are people who still believe it. There are people who don't. No one ever proved, yay or nay, whether that was true or not, in my opinion. Shots, fake strikes, and fake emails against Katie Joy to try to get people to hate her. Did he finally start coming after me? My point no, is, if you trust the things that people are saying about Katie Joy without looking into him yourself, everybody will hate Katie. And I do think that is a conclusion we can make. Is Katie abrasive? Yes, she is. Is that something to call a YouTuber out for? Unless unless you're going to call out every abrasive YouTuber? No, not in my opinion. Is Katie rude to people? Sometimes she sure is, but so All am I, time. and so is every other YouTuber. And in the not end, true. if this group wasn't so intent on making everything Katie does look like the biggest, baddest thing ever, maybe people could adequately make up their mind whether Katie is doing something wrong or not but with this massive amount of information spammed to the platform every time she speaks and all of it made to be the most negative thing it can nobody can make up a good decision without spending long periods of time putting into it i've done everything i can up to now to sift through the garbage on both sides and in the end i just see katie as a youtuber who's until she stops being willing to learn her lessons change her behavior and be better when she stops being willing to do that maybe i will criticize her in the future but as long as that's what she's doing i'll give her the same type of um uh oh benefit as I do everybody else. Now, what about my Sorry final thoughts? That, Let me give them to you. After Steve McRae asked me to weigh in on this story, I've done everything in my power to be able to try to understand it, put out the truth about it, and walk away from it knowing what's going on and having a resolution. Luckily, we now have... Yeah, he still hasn't proven that anything in these accounts has been false. He could have opened some of these tweets and read the comments and the other evidence. He could have explained why it's not true about the flag, but he can't because it's not true. If the flag had been torn up by her neighbors and death threats made, it would have been in the police report. So where's the evidence she showed you? You're not going to show it on an evidence video. Okie doke. Have a resolution for Steve McCray. He has a deal with Katie Joy and he cannot talk about her. I know this for a fact. He entered it. This is no longer true. He can talk to her, talk about her. He can... Fair use, talk about her. But on the advice of his friends and his lawyer, he has decided not to. And I think that's great because it's taken a lot of your content and you're being able to use Steve's name and in, in Katie's name in the same video to get extra views, which is really all you're about anyway, Jason, and everyone knows it. 
into a deal with Katie Joy Paulson. If he tries to tell you it's not true, please send it to my mods and we'll send it to her. Sorry. But after seeing the way he approached Sherelle's world, and after seeing the way he's turned anyone he can against her, and knowing it all started for him back in June, when she was brave enough to speak up and call out Steve for behavior that is provable, recorded, and real. I'm sorry to say it, but in this situation, I'm siding against the Facebook troll group. When Katie makes mistakes in the future, I will criticize her for it. I do ah. all the time. In fact, that's why she's taking my most recent advice. But when someone's willing to hear the criticism against them and change their behavior, if they uh, feel that it should be changed, then there's really nothing else to say there. We'll have to weigh in on each individual situation as it goes in the future. One thing's for sure, the people that are part of that Facebook group, especially the admins, anyone that shared her information, her box, these especially Stephen Craig, Will Red, Dean I'll Cut You and the WOACB commentary account, Cheshire, Dick Dawson, Red's rhetoric included. I don't think you should be supporting anyone that is okay with this happening because if you think they won't do it to you the first time you anger them, remember, all of them were best friends with me, not all the creators were best friends with me not long ago. And when did that all change? When I criticized McCray. I'll give you a little secret. I've angered Steve McCray before. He's angered me. I've angered Tina before. She's angered me. I've angered without any crystal balls. Without any crystal balls before. Or I thought I had. That was a misunderstanding. But guess what? We didn't turn on each other. We didn't do what you just said we'd do. We got over it because that's what adults do. No one lied on the other one. No one publicly shamed anyone or doxed anyone. You're just running your, your mouth and this fake-ass narrative for the payroll. Right, because he asked me to weigh in on this, and that's the irony here. This man asked me to cover this story, and because of following the evidence, all you do know before I put out Versus Mode Part 2, I did reach out to Steve and try to actually have him put it out on his channel so that I didn't have to, and he refused. The point is, people like him on this platform deserve to be criticized, because the people that are supporting him, other than maybe just maybe one or two of them, they're only doing it because they don't know the truth about what he did. We are not supporting Steve. We are supportive of Steve. This has nothing to do with Steve anymore. Steve's backed away, but you can't make a dollar, as much dollars, excuse me, if you don't use Steve's name in your videos. This is the worst video. This is the greatest video I've ever seen Jason post because he knows it sucks. He immediately went on Periscope this morning and tried to explain it all. He hasn't proven anything in this video other than, yes, there are people who are sick of Katie Joy and they are absolutely exposing her lies, her manipulation, her perpetual victim that she plays, um, her cancel culture, and she's a complete hypocrite. All you did in this video, Jason, was prove nothing. Thank y'all for watching. Sucks.